Yes. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for your presence in our midst. We thank you for Holy Spirit, our teacher. Will you open our understanding to your word? Flood the eyes of our inner man with your glorious light. Give us the spirit of knowledge and revelation into the knowledge of you, that our hearts will be drawn more and more to you. Lord, we want the revelation of Yeshua, the Lamb of God. We want the revelation of your Son. We want to behold him and be transformed into his likeness, into his image, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, this is our Tuesday night, and uh, we're going to continue from where we left last week, right? Now, I was saying something, uh, and this is part of, actually, our talk of destiny, okay? Even what I started to mention just now, it's part of what uh, I say, we say about destiny, okay? God, and we're going to go into the book of Genesis, actually, today. Uh, and so last time we were talking about knowing where we came from yes. and knowing and, and, and we need to understand where we are and then we need to know where we're going. Yes. Okay? Then we spent time looking at God's desire for us and looking at the scriptures that tell us how God intended uh, and framed a, a destiny for us, thoughts and a desire for us. He did all these things in his heart. Okay, and, and he did that so that when we come here, we are not lost. You know, I, I was talking to a gentleman yesterday who was explaining to me as people that are lost completely. You know, and, um, and we will be ministering to them. They will begin to come here. So we do have a lot of work to do. Yes, we prepared, right? Yes. Yes. We do have a lot of work to do. And so let's go to the book of Genesis. Uh, I think, yeah, let's start from Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read verses 26 all the way to 29. I taught on the book of Genesis two years ago for almost the whole year. Wow. Only the two, the three chapters of Genesis for a year. Wow. To the point that my son was, every time he would wake up, he would, and then God said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, boy. Yes. Can we read verse 26 to 29? Yes. Then God said, And now we will make human beings. They will be like us and resemble us. They will have power over the fish, the birds, and all animals, domestic and wild, large and small. So God created human beings, making them to be like himself. He created them male and female, blessed them, and said, have many children so that your descendants will live all over the earth and bring it under their control. I am putting you in charge of the fish, the birds, and all the wild animals. I have provided all kinds of grain and all kinds of fruit for you to eat. But for all the wild animals and for all the birds, I have provided grass and leafy plants for food. And it was done. Amen. Amen. Uh, action. Yes, and, and so we, we we back in Genesis. You know, I spoke, I talked about Genesis so long. Um, it is very powerful. It's prophetic, yeah. and you and I were just talking about creativity. Yeah. So let me open a little section right there and mention this. And then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Yes. Okay? Image and likeness. Image and likeness. 
you know, to move like he moves, to be like him, to represent him, to be a reflection of him in the earth. When I see your, your photograph mm -hmm. and I showed your, your sons, they said, that's that, mm -hmm. but it's your image. You understand that? Yes. It's your image. When you speak, when you're not in the house, and you call your house, and speak to your children, and give them instructions, they don't see you. Right. Your voice represents you. Right. It carries the same authority as if you were presently in the house, doesn't it? Correct. Yes. And so, uh, the image of God on the earth, is you and me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when the rest of creation look at us, we see God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> when your sons look at you, we see God. When your wife looks at you, she sees God. We are the image. That's why we read in Romans chapter 8 last time, that all these things are working together for our good. And what's the objective? It's to conform us to the image of His Son, Yeshua. Yes. Okay? Why do we have to be conformed to the image of Jesus? Because He is the one that came to restore us. You see? When God created, look at what he purposed for us to be. And then something happened. And we lost all that. So our Lord Jesus Christ came to bring us back to here. To where we are again in his image and according to his likeness. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's good. We are not talking about <clears throat> behavior management. See, when people go to, <clears throat> to prison, they learn behavior management. Behavior management is when you control yourself, but you are not changed. At the core, you still the same. You're just controlling yourself. Because uh, the the whole Old Testament covenant, okay, and and it's like our children, our children, we raise them up almost, almost like under the old covenant, reward and punishment. Right. <clears throat> if you do this, you get a spanking. You acted well at school. I get you, get you a candy. Right, yeah, sure. and, and, and so <laughs> people who are <clears throat> under the old covenant, under the law, still function under the system of reward and punishment. Mm. And there are people like that today in the church who function under, the, under reward and punishment. They are in fear of punishment and they have to be motivated with some something, a good miracle or something. And sometimes God will be like, okay, if you didn't get money the whole month, will you still worship me? Or do I have to motivate you with, it, with something? Mm, that's good. <laughs> That was the whole debate between God and Job and, and, and Satan over Job. Satan said, no, 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 no. You see, Job will not, he will curse you in your face if you didn't protect him and bless him like you do. Right, he said skin for skin. He said he will curse you in your face. Mm. Why? Because the, the devil is accusing you and I like that every day. Can you move that down? Yeah. A little bit over here. Yes. The devil he is the accuser. accuser of our brother. Yes, he is. He accuses you that you don't really love God. Bring it a bit closer. Bring it closer again. Closer again. 
Yeah, so that it reflects on us. Yes, good. I think that's better. The devil is accusing us every day. Yes. He says, uh, uh, Josiah would not worship you if you had not given him X, Y, Z. Yeah. Or it's because you promised to bless him, that's why. There's people that pray only because so God can give them stuff. 99% of prayer activities of a lot of people in the church have to do with give me, give me, give me, give me. Right, same clause. Give me, give me, give me, give me. I like that. Yeah. And so they're functioning. And so if they didn't get it, they moved to another church. Mm. They didn't get it, they moved to another church. Even if the presence of God is here, they will leave it. They will go to where they get miracles, even if they don't get anything spiritually there. Mm. This is important to understand. There are a lot of people who minister out of their gifts, but they have no fruit, but they have no life to impart. And in fact, we know that in the end times, the devil will use miracles to seduce the people of God. And the Bible says, even the elect are at risk of being seduced and deceived. So this is not going to be a joke. So if today you are hooked to what God can give you, and what God can do, and you are not concerned about His image, this ought to be the first priority. These are the first words, the first expression of God's intent about you, is to make you in His image and according to His likeness. Wow. That's powerful. That really is. Awesome. And, and you can see here that that sits above giving you authority over the rest of creation. It it's above. Unless you carry that image, unless you reflect that image and, that, and manifest his likeness, you could not rule. That's what it says. That's what it is. it is. And so, I'm telling you something. People are looking for gifts, gifts, gifts. If you look for the likeness, everything will be submitted to you. Mm. And the whole of creation will yield to you when you reflect this image in the same manner. In the same manner that... Uh, the whole of creation submits to God when you reflect the image of God. Guess when they look at you? They like, yes, sir. Wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everywhere our Lord Jesus Christ went when he was physically on the earth, demons recognized him. And some of them were like, okay, we know who you are. Hallelujah. Well, guess what? Many of us demons know who we are. Actually, all of us demons know who we are. Right. You can't fool them. That's right. <laughs> that reminds me of the passage in Acts where uh, mm -hmm. the seven sons the of seven sons, right? They said, We know Jesus. Paul, we, know we, know Jesus Paul. Paul. we don't know you. No, 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 we you. don't see you on that list of people to whom we can submit. They work to make it out there. You don't look like the image that we can submit to. When you reflect that image of God, God comes down and moves through you. When Moses finished building the tabernacle in the wilderness, when Solomon finished building the temple in Jerusalem, what happened? As soon as God sees something that looks like him, that reflects his image, 
that moves according to his likeness, the glory descends. You don't have to yell. You don't have to kick. You don't have to run around the church. You don't have to do none of, none of that thing. It will come down and the city will be blessed. And your family will be blessed. And people will begin to honor you and favor you. And the authority of God will begin to emanate from you. The glory will begin to be visible. I feel that. That's, that's speaking to but, my spirit. But we're looking for everything else except this. How many people fast over this? How many people pray for this? How many people fast for 40 days over this? We're fasting for cars, we're fasting, fasting for jobs, we're fasting for money. For, for money, we're fasting for physical healing, we're fasting for everything else except the very like few people him. spend a lot of time to be like him. It's amazing. When Moses built the tabernacle in the wilderness, there were a couple of items that met you right at the entrance. The altar of sacrifice and the lava, the same. That lava was made in such a way that you could see yourself like a mirror. It's what women used. I think, was it bronze? I think it was bronze. Bronze basin, yes. Yes. And, and, and that's bronze is what women used in those days to look their faces in. And so the purpose of the lava, it, it, it was a basin, it had water in it, but it also gave you a reflection of yourself. Right. So you could see yourself. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Does that have, it must have significance to the crystal sea that is before the Lord in the book of Revelation where it talks about that, how there's that bronze basin in front of the, you know, sitting there in the temple inside, there must be a likeness, a representation of the crystal sea that's before God yeah, and the yes. throne in heaven. It, it, it reflects, it, it's reflective, you understand that? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you could not move through the tabernacle, see, you came from, see, the tabernacle is like this, and there is a fence around it, mm -hmm. and so you are outside, and the entrance is through the east. You went in from the east, that's where the gate was. And so the, the Holy of Holies was west. Okay? Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in the book of Genesis. You see? The, and so, as you, you move, before you get to the Holy of Holies, to where you can be in the very presence of God, it's a journey. And we are going through that journey in this Bible studies and prayers. And so you could not jump from outside and jump the outer court and the holy place and it, suddenly you find yourself in the holy of holies and people are like god we want your presence god we want your presence no you move into his presence you enter his presence I'm scared. but you could not just walk in Today, even our churches, the hour of prayer, like this hour of prayer, this whole place is already transformed because of what we're doing this very minute. This place is now set apart. The presence, he said, with two or three gathered in my name, I'm in their midst. So I believe by faith that he who never lies has already fulfilled that, that, that promise. And he is here. And this is holy ground now. But you have to look at people, even how they walk in the church. They don't recognize that place. Sometimes we walk on the street 
and we see some of those street evangelists praying, and we don't even recognize that place is already holy place. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, when you begin to walk in fellowship, like pray without ceasing, it doesn't mean all the time, it means your spirit. You, everywhere you are, ought to be holy place, holy ground. A good place to be. You see? And so he said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So he made us spirit, soul, and body. And again, the tabernacle has three parts, the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. Mm -hmm. And God, when you accept Christ, He comes and establishes His seat in your most holy place, in your, your spirit man. But He needs to manifest out of the spirit man through you. But your soul, he has to go through that. And that's a problem. He says he's knocking. He's not the baptism uh, revelation 320. Yeah. He's standing at the door knocking. He's not knocking from outside. You have accepted Christ. He's already in there. He's knocking. If you would let him so he can come and manifest himself through your soul and through your body. Thank you. That's awesome. Woo. That is awesome. Am I excited or what? Yes, you're excited. I'm Hallelujah. excited. <laughs> In his image. That's good. One of my prayers is, Lord, would you reveal to me what you see when you look at me? What do I look like to you? This is like when the folks in the wilderness stood before that basin and saw themselves. He says, this word of God is a meal. When you look into it, it should tell you some stuff about yourself. Amen. Like we just read now, and a normal thinking person should be like, okay, how about me right now? What image am I displaying? Excitement. <laughs> <laughs> See, people are more concerned with their reputation than their character. Your reputation is what people think of you. Your character is who you are, what God sees you. And that's why people practice cover up to protect their reputation. Of course, if your character is what's supposed to be, your, it, 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 your reputation will match your character. But for a lot of people, there's a gap between the reputation and the character. And the gap is bigger than the Pacific Ocean. It's a big gap. It is a big gap, <laughs> trust me. It's all the way from California to Russia. <laughs> That's a big gap. Yes, it is. It's right now. Let's read that verse again, 26. And God said, And now we will make human beings that will be like us and resemble us. They will have power over the fish, the birds, and all animals, domestic and wild, large and small. Hallelujah. This is God delegating authority. This is your mandate in the earth. This is what you and I were created to be and do. To represent God in the earth and release, project his kingdom into the earth. Amen. Now, where did you grow up? In Cape Girardeau. Where's that? About an hour and a half south of here. 
south of here? Yes, south of St. Louis. Right here in Missouri? Yes. Okay, have you ever been outside this country? No. Okay, so you're not going to know what I'm going to explain to you. Okay. Okay, I grew up in Congo. We used to be a colony up until June 30th, 1960. We used to be a Belgian colony. Okay? So when, because we were a Belgian colony, the Kingdom of Belgium appointed the governor mm -hmm. who represented the King of Belgium in Congo. My father. And the purpose of that governor was to turn Congo to look like Belgium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it was a projection of the authority of the king. So when we submitted to the king, whom we didn't see because he was in the in Belgium, right. we were submitting to the governor, to the king through the governor. So the king carried the authority. He had the mandate as long as he reflected the image of the king. And how would he reflect the image of the king? If he begins to carry out his own agenda, he's out of there. Mm -hmm. The king would be like, no, 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 no. You, you die. Mm -hmm. You can no longer represent me like the seven sons of Skin. Mm -hmm. They had their own agenda. Right. That's, good. That's why in John, let's go to the book of John, we'll come back to Genesis again. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. This is exciting. I don't know about you, but my spirit is jumping. Yeah, I'm feeling something on the one that is in my spirit. Let's go to John chapter 1. I have an anticipation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe this would be just. Let's try verse. Let's try verse uh, 14. The Word became a human being and, full of grace and truth, lived among us. We saw His glory, the glory of which He received as the Father's only Son. So, I don't know, that's not the scripture that... I'm looking for, but I'm going to find it before we finish. By the grace of God, I don't want to spend all my time looking for it. What is it so? But the, the, the Bible tells us that our Lord Jesus Christ, He came and He literally explained the Father. I will find it. He explained the Father. He made the Father known to us. You, you, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's not that, it's not eight. I, I, re I recall what you're talking about. Yes, we will get it. We will get it. Before we finish this, this study, we will get it. If you didn't get it today, we will get it next week. On Tuesday, on Thursday. You, you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I found him. Verse 18. Good. John 1 verse 18. I was just four verses away from me. Let's read. What, what version are you reading? Good news, I love that. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, who is the same as God, and is at the Father's side, He has made Him known. He has done what? He has made Him known. Okay. Uh, my version he says he has declared him let me try another version what did I say John 1 18 okay 
this is a Bible study, so we'll take our time and go through the scriptures. No one has ever seen God. God the Father, who is pure spirit. But God, this only Son, is very close to the Father, and He has shown us what God looks like. Or He has made Him Amen. known. Amen. The reason, I forgot which version says that he has explained the Father. Let me try another version. You, you, you understand that? Yes. So, how did he do that? Just by living, by his life. Listen to this version. This is the, the Amplified Bible. He says, he has done what? Interpreted him. Interpreted him. And made him know. Wow, that's good. But this is powerful, isn't it? It is. Thank you. By his living, he interpreted the Father. What does it mean to interpret some somebody? It's like watch him right. in me. Yeah. It's like somebody played a song and you interpret it, and when people are outside listen to it, they're like, wow. That's Josiah singing in there. <laughs> and, and then when they come in and they find me, they say, that was perfect interpretation. Yeah. You see that? I like it. He translated him into the, 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 the way that we could see because we had lost our capacity to see the Spirit. So the Bible tells us in, in the book of Hebrew, and we'll get there, we're not going to read today, that he was the exact image of the Father. So our Lord Jesus Christ had, has not, had not went bad at the time he came to earth and still has not lost this image. But we lost it. And now that's why everything God is doing is bring us here, all the hardship, all the trouble, every experience that you're going through when you are born again. He is working all things together for your good, making all things work for your good. For the ultimate purpose, having a new car is nothing. Having a big house is nothing. God's ultimate purpose is this. And this life is a school. Amen. It is. Because when we go beyond this into eternity, we continue to serve God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. This is preparation here. So let's not just look at it in terms of this earth. God's eyes are looking far beyond that's why i said you got to know where you're coming from you got to know where you are and you got to know where you're going then you will get a better perspective if you compare your lifespan in the earth to how long you're going to live in eternity this looks like your lunch break now <laughs> how long is it 15 minutes your coffee break it's over <laughs> So oh, this is yeah. just short. Yes. So we should be investing more into eternity than into this life. Yes, but what do you see out there? The opposite. The opposite. The opposite. People are pursuing power and authority before they pursue the image. That's good to teach you, Pastor. Our purpose is to see each one of us every day, Lord, what do I look like? You know, you will boast because you haven't seen yourself. But God gave me a little movie of myself. I didn't like it. Mm, really? See, your spirit is okay. It's said, it's fine. It's your soul. Right. Dirty. Ugly. Mm. Now, let me give you a hint, okay? We'll study this next time, okay? I'm going to give you something. Do you know why we, we're confused? Even when we speak in tongues and you look at most of the people in the church confused? Mm -hmm. Do you know why? No. Okay. The Bible says two people cannot walk together unless they agree, right? Right. 
Can you get along with somebody and journey with them if you don't agree with them? No. Well, guess what? If your soul and your spirit don't agree, and, and, and yet it's one person, now you understand the trouble within you. If your soul and your spirit don't agree, the, your house is divided and you are the house. You are divided. Double-minded man is unstable. Yeah, unstable in all his ways. <laughs> Did not say he was confused? Yeah, he's confused. So you use the word unstable. Yeah. And that's even better. You, you, you understand that? Yes. When your soul and your spirit man can't agree, the Bible says, to, no wonder one time you look like a Christian, the next time... Look like an even. Worse. You, you get the picture? Yes, I do. This is our prayer. Lord, what do I look like? I, not, not so I get discouraged. But God gave me an image of myself several, several times. Sometimes I saw myself naked. And I'm like, wow. I thought I was rich. I didn't know I was poor and naked and wretched and blind. <laughs> Sometimes wow. he will show because this is a prayer. This is something that I've had to wrestle with. Sometimes I saw myself wearing rags, literally wearing rags, barefooted, walking around with my hair was not combed. I looked like a madman. No, I I took time to pray over these things do you understand yes let me tell you something don't you teach stuff that you haven't walked in there's no power right you understand that yes, I do. there is no power yes, yes. and a lot of people go read books to come and preach no wonder the churches, there's no transformation, there is nothing, no people are not changed because the preacher himself is preaching stuff that he doesn't even know what they, they, they are. You're preaching somebody else's. You know that? That's why people go around is like, I want you to lay hands on me and, and, and I want a double portion of what you have. Are you sure? Are you willing to pay double the price? That's right. You think I just got it like that? Somebody laid hands on me? Right. That's right. I paid the price. I still pay the price every day. That's what Jesus said where he said before you go to build something, count, count the, the cost. cost. Make sure you have all now the you will double. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and then when they begin to go in when they begin to experience trouble, they accuse the devil and do and witchcraft. Mm -hmm. You asked for it. Right. And now you can't handle it. Now you're blaming everybody around you. How quick do people forget their own words they, 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 that they prayed with? Many times God will test you to see if what you mean what you said during your prayers. He'll test you. He'll test you. We say so many things when we pray and we don't mean them. And then God comes right back and tests you and now you're cursing everybody, including the angels. We have to be careful. These are the very first words spoken by God about men. And they represented his full intent to be in his image according to his likeness. And if there is one thing that should occupy all my time, if there is one thing that I should invest immensely into, if there is something that should occupy the majority of my time, whether I sleep or awake, is this. Amen. That's why I had to wrestle with God. I still do today. Until I began to see myself wearing nice suits in my dream, being clean and presentable, shining, glorious. Amen. I will not rest. I will keep going back to that love of the same. 
to check myself. It's a daily process. Because sometimes things creep up on you and you don't even know. As you go through life, you get frustrated at work. You get frustrated in your marriage. You get disappointed because somebody didn't do what they were supposed to do. People abuse you and practice injustice against you. You, you need this and you can't get it. Those things are affecting your soul. And you don't know. It's gradual. Don't wait until the day you lash out. Ch get check up every day. Before you reach that point where you lash out and the damage is irreparable. So we see people get so they, they lash out. They, 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 in America, they say he snapped. Mm -hmm. what, did it happen suddenly? Nobody snaps all of a sudden. And we'll talk about that. Because we didn't look. You see a preacher on the pulpit who snaps. Mm. It didn't just happen. And people say, how come this was a bishop? Because they never go and stand before that person to look themselves in the mirror. Lord, reveal to me what I look like today. I've been going through some stuff. I want to know how they have affected me. Just being alive on this earth, it's rough enough. It can affect you. Right. It does affect you. Yes. Right. Isaiah said, I am a man of unclean lips. I live in the midst of a corrupt generation. It affects us. We have to work on this all the time. Keep coming back to that mirror. What image am I reflecting today? I don't care what people think. I care first of all what he thinks. Shouldn't this be the main topic of intercession? That our churches will reflect nature will be that on earth as it is? On earth as it is? In heaven. You understand that? Yes. If our main concern for our churches is to be on earth as it is in heaven, we'll stop trying to compete with the church next door. We'll stop trying to be like Pastor So and So. And I will go into heaven and check that book in, in Psalms 139 and Psalm 40 and check the book and say, Lord, I want to be on earth as it's written in heaven. And by the way, our model and pardon is in heaven. His name is Yeshua. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because he says he wants us to come to the point of conformity to the image of his son. So he is my pardon. When he told Moses to build the tabernacle, he said he will do everything exactly according to the pardon I show you. My ministry has a pattern in heaven. It didn't just start. This ministry is registered in heaven. So I have to go up, up there regularly to check what it looks like. What, is it, what does it look like in 2014? What does it look like in 2015? So that I can move along with him. And the Lord said, my father is still working, so I am also working along with him. What he's doing today is what I'm doing. I'm not, I, I don't want to be caught doing what he was doing five years ago. And a lot of churches are, are still running on the revelation they had 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. They have no new revelation. Right. They're way behind. You're already out of context, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you, you, you've only driven in America, right? right so yeah. you only drive on the right hand. Yeah, right, so, yeah. But when you go to Europe God, and God. you drive in France, you cross, you get in London, you have to switch to drive on the left. Wow. 
if she's still driving like you're in France, you may not even make it to court. Yeah, you get in a wreck, you'd be in a box. <laughs> <laughs> horizontal. Yeah, not I like that. You'd be in the box, not <laughs> vertical, horizontal. Yeah, let's get it, let's get it like you, you, you see the point? I follow. Yeah. We must understand the state. It's awakening something. It's not my own image. That's why, let, let, me, let me give you another scripture before, I, I, let's go to the book of Corinthians. Ah, God, mm -hmm. oh my God. My spirit is jumping. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God we're recording, so yeah, go back and watch this again. Let me see. Let's go to verse. Start from verse 16, all the way to verse 19. For this reason we never become discouraged, even though our physical being is gradually decaying, yet our spiritual being is being renewed day after day, praise you Jesus. Hallelujah. And this small and temporary trouble we suffer will bring us a tremendous and eternal glory, much greater than the trouble. For we fix our attention, not on things that are seen, but on things that are unseen. What can be seen lasts only for a time, but what cannot be seen lasts forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me read this version. Whew. Isn't that something? He said we fix our attention on what? on things unseen and yet most of our lives we focused on things that are seen we focus on things of the earth that's what it means right. and they are temporal like I said our life here the span of our life here looks like a lunch a lunch break. <laughs> even today or 16 but when a person changes and follows the Lord or turns to the Lord That's good. because before you were headed this way and now when you change and turn and follow the Lord those are key words turn change follow the Lord Right. Turn to him and you said fix our attention on him to follow him. You, you understand that? Yes. Hallelujah. He says, when you do that, that covering, the veil is taken away. Before this, let's go back to verse 14. But their minds were closed or stubborn or hardened and even today that same covering or veil hides the meaning when they read the old agreement or the old covenant or the old testament so there is a veil on people's minds that prevents them from seeing the glory of god when they read the book from understanding right that's right there's a lot of people that read the Bible, there but they're receiving nothing. I've been there before. Been there before. But that covering is removed when you actually turn Thank you. to follow the Lord. Now, let me ask you a question. Did you ever? Read in the Bible, our Lord Jesus Christ, tell anybody who would like to be born again? Uh, 
He says, follow me. Follow me. That's what he said. This is very important. We'll get to that part. He said, follow me. He says, when you finally turn to follow the Lord, the veil is removed. What does it mean to turn? To repent. To repent. Okay? A lot of people are interested in the forgiveness without repentance. You know, you can sin seven times, seventy times a day. That's four hundred and ninety times. That's like every five minutes. And you still forgive them. And that's just our measure as humans. God will forgive you every second. He's rich in mercy. But forgiving you will not change you. <laughs> That's why there are people who are forgiven every day, but they keep coming back for the same issues to be forgiven. You're not making any progress. Come on. Look at this. He says that covering, which is the veil, is removed, is taken away. It is removed, not lifted, because if it is lifted, it will drop down again. It's removed. Somebody said, thank you, Lord, for removing the veil. Now I see. Now I see. Only through Christ. Even today, when they read the law of Moses, there is a covering over a veil laying upon their minds, their hearts. But when a person changes and follows, turns to the law, that covering the veil is taken away. The Lord is the Spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom from the veil. Freedom from the veil, not freedom to do anything you want. Uh, people talk about it in the church. They say the Lord is the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, so we can do whatever we want. No, it's freedom from that veil. You are now free to see. Then why aren't you seeing? Verse 18, our faces then are not covered. So we, with an unveiled face, we all reflect oh, as we behold, as we contemplate the Lord's glory and we are being changed or transformed to be like Him into the same image. And that the, this version is being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. Amen. It's like climbing the stairs. Remember when you came into the, the place, you yeah. have to climb one step. But if you climb the steps and you never made it upstairs, something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if you climb the steps, you have to get to Genesis 1.26. To the fullness of the glory. Because you are growing from one degree of glory to another degree of glory to another degree of glory. So every time I go back to the basin and I look at myself to see how much glory am I reflecting today compared to yesterday. I feel like dancing. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm serious. <laughs> That's exciting. That is exciting me so much. Ooh. I can see that. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Do you see what the gospel is supposed to do? Yes. So when we come together, my intercession is, Lord, we want to see you. Hallelujah. We don't just want to come together just to have an intellectual stimulation right. through the world. And there are churches like that. Mm -hmm. Or we're not just coming to ha have a moment of feeling good, an emotional boost. That's why most people, by the time they get home, 
that will boost is over and they're fighting in the car already before they even get home right at the door of the church they're already fighting uh, in fact they're fighting inside the church already that's the birds that steal the seed that lands on the stony path listen under the old testament king david talks about it meditating on the torah the word it was a mental meditation under the new covenant we meditating on the lord we putting our eyes in we contemplating and beholding him so when i open my bible i got to see him hallelujah he's the word I must receive a fresh revelation of him so I can release it into the earth. Unless I see him, see, you are transformed into whatever you behold. If your focus is on the things temporal of this earth, guess what? That's what you are transformed into. That's why I like going for another checkup mm -hmm. to the basin, to the basin. See what I look like until I look and I begin to see Him. I will give myself no rest. That's my goal because that's His goal. Didn't we read? He has plans for us. Wonderful plans. Very high. Now let me tell you something. If you take care of this, everything else will fall in line. Trust me, everything else, your relationships, your economics, because he says, seek you first, yeah. the kingdom of God, and then what? Oh, and his it's righteousness and oh did he say half no, I said okay so why would you like to seek all you don't even have enough lifetime to seek all on this earth so why don't I just focus on one thing and once I get hold of this everything falls into place then I begin to develop a grateful heart for what he has given me. Himself. I begin to be content. Oh, remember I told you I gave you my testimony mm -hmm. about the house and the cars and yeah. the food and everything. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of that in America? No. We're still looking for a miracle? <laughs> That's a miracle. It is a miracle. You, you said that? So when you turn, I like your, your, the version that you read, that when you focus your attention, listen, the object of your focus reflects where you put your affection. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Can I read a verse? Go ahead. Psalm 37. Verse 3 and 4, trust in the Lord and do good, live in the land and be safe. Seek your happiness in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desire. There you go. And we'll talk, that's it, that's it. we'll talk, probably study that for six months. Amen. It's a good verse to study. <laughs> he said, put your trust in him. In other words, focus on him. Focus on him. Focus on the Lord. Focus will bring transformation in your life Amen. whatever you focus on if you focus on materialistic stuff that's what you turn into one sign that you have lost your focus is when you begin to experience stress mm -hmm. stress is a signal when you shift your focus from the Lord to your needs, mm. 
you begin to experience stress. It's an alarm. Amen. Thank God we had an alarm. Yes, it's an alarm. So whenever you begin to experience stress, man, dig in. Pull away. If you're doing something and it begins to be stressful, something is wrong. We're not supposed to be stressed in ministry. You see that? Yes. So we have to be sensitive in the spirit to pick up these things, those little things that will creep up on you. Mm. The devil is patient. He's very patient. He'll walk on you for 50 years. Mm. At age 60, so you can do something at age 60 that will be it will go all over the news. <laughs> May it never be. <laughs> Just look around. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Can you become a bishop to 25,000 member church and suddenly you begin to say, Ah, oh, my mother didn't kiss me, my father wasn't there. And you're 60. Mm -hmm. And you didn't, you know, you, you didn't stand at the lava, mm -hmm. you didn't see it. Well, have you been looking, looking at the Lamborghinis and the million dollar houses and the suits and flying in first class and stuff like that? Are you, are you getting this? Is this, is, this, is this the word or what? This is the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? I thought we were going to read all the way to verse 29. We're still in verse 26. <laughs> Genesis 1. <laughs> that reminds me of someone. I know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, man. He couldn't get out of the book, the first chapter, the first verse of Ruth, the book of Ruth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is what you intended for us. This is what you purposed for us. Draw us, O oh God, to desire this. You're the one that created the desire within us. Draw us, draw our hearts to this, O oh God. Draw us away from the things that take us away from Genesis 1 verse 26. May we set our mind, turn, set our faces like flint on this. May we, O oh God, focus on this every moment. Cause us, O oh God, to see how beautiful this is. And give us the grace to pursue it and pay the price necessary until we see the manifestation of your image, of your glory in us. So we may begin to walk in our destiny again. That you may be glorified. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? He is great. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. Who is like unto thee? You thought of me before even the foundation of the world. In other words, the whole world, everything was made for you. Amen. He created everything after thinking of you. So you were first and then he begins to create everything for you. He did create everything for you. And now, instead of 
these things serving us, we serve in them. What a reversal. Mm -hmm. We enslaved by them. No wonder even a simple mosquito is now biting us. It should be scared of us. <laughs> <laughs> it should be bowing before us. Right. It should. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 27 in Genesis. Verse 27. Chapter 1. Genesis. Chapter one. Now, mind you, we will go back to Genesis 1. I don't know when. So God created human beings, making them to be like himself. He created them male and female, blessed them, and said, Have many children, so that your descendants will live all over the earth and bring it under their control. I am putting you in charge of the fish, the birds, and all the wild animals. Hallelujah. He created them, male and female, he created him. Which means that when he made Adam, both of them were in there. That's how we started. That's what marriage is supposed to be. That's right. Man and a woman. Man woman inside people. of man. Woman was created inside of man. He said he made them in him, in Adam. Actually, he called both of them one name, Adam. Wow. Guess when the woman became Eve? After the fall. Mm. Now, Adam is like, yeah. you're going to get your own name. <laughs> <laughs> We're no longer one. <laughs> wow, that's, that's God kept calling them by the same name. Mm -hmm. we, we're going to get there. God called them by the same name. He did not pull Eve, the woman, out of Adam to separate them. He still looked at them as one. So I said, when a man and a woman become one flesh. That's good. Today is something else. So everybody trying to do his own thing. You and I are called to be the heads of our homes. Yes. And not the tails. And uh, we, we were made to lead our homes. We were made to produce those who will fill the earth, ruling the earth, our children. That's the kind of children we're supposed to produce. Amen. It's right here. Our children were supposed to fill the earth in the position of rulership. We were not supposed to produce children who go around shooting people. No, you're right. Wow. Hmm? Are rioting. Rioting. He created them both in his own image, in the image of God. He created him. He created him, male and female. When he created, finished making Adam, Adam was male and female. And then God pulled the female out of Adam so that she could help him. And the mandate, this is your mandate. We will continue this mandate in eternity. Amen. Oh yeah. Thank you, God. Christ came to restore. What does it mean to restore? What it was supposed to be. Did not tell you, you got to know where you're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. See, in our Western way of 
looking at things, we look at things like this linear. God looks at things in a circular line. For us, the further you move towards point B, the further you're moving away from A. And even in a Hebrew mindset, the further you move from point A, the closer you're getting to point A. That's why the Bible says, God knows the end from the beginning. He determined the end from the beginning. Guess what? Your end is in the beginning. Amen. That's where we have it. <laughs> Praise you, God. That's awesome. It's here. It's not hard to see. Why do people get confused? What are we looking for? Where are we looking at? It is, it's right there. Now we know where we're going. Now we know where we came from and we know where we're going. And we know how we messed up too. That's right. Oh yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Awesome. Thank you, God. You're a good father. Father, we come before the lava. Before the bronze basin. Before the mirror. We choose, O oh God, to put our eyes and our attention and our focus in beholding our Lord, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, the one who alone is worthy of worship and praise, the one who alone is the Alpha and the Omega, the word that was from the beginning he is our savior and our master our big brother we look up to him oh god we turning to you lord we turning we turning to follow you in every area of our lives where we hadn't been following you oh god we turning to follow you will you reveal to us in those areas of god where we were directing our own lives instead of following you so we and give us the grace the ability to turn and follow you father we repent that we have attempted to chart our own path and we know it's led to death, frustration, failure. And so we repent and we turn to you. We turn to you, Lord. Lead us, good shepherd. Lead us. Lead us. Lead us into your garden. Lead us into the green pastures. Lead us by the still waters to the place of rest. Lead us. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Will you give us the revelation of what we looked like when we, we were in you? The glory and the beauty, and the power, the excellence and the perfection, Lord. Reveal to us even what Adam looked like when he first came fresh from your hands after you have breathed in him when he first breathed out and saw you father will you give us the revelation so we may see what he looked like yes. take us back into the garden lord we want to know you lord jesus be the object of all of our affections and desires that we may desire you alone we don't want to desire you more than we desire other things. We just want to desire you alone. The only object of our affection. The only reason why we live. Our future maker. We thank you Lord. 
We thank you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We, we, we will continue on Thursday. Awesome. You know, I, I feel like just shouting and, and jumping and running and I feel like running. <laughs> oh God. And then after the spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You awesome. You wonderful. Hallelujah, King. There's no one like you. There's no one like you that could formulate and frame a purpose and desire and thoughts and plans. Such marvelous, wonderful. Your thoughts are so many. Yes. Like the sand of the sea. Oh, God. We choose to align our hearts with your heart. Yes. That your heart may become our heart. That we may walk in your purpose. Yes. Teach us your ways, O oh God. Yes. Teach us your ways. Teach us your ways, O oh God. May we be consumed with the desires of your heart. Father, we make a commitment without you, with the act of our will and the help of the Holy Spirit, even as you empower us with the, with your grace that we refuse to be distracted we refuse to be diverted we choose to turn away we detach ourselves from the things that are not for our destinies for from the things that are not for your purposes for us we detach ourselves from door we break every soul tie with any place and any individual every memory every thought and imagination every ideas everything oh god we detach our souls from the love of money from the love of the arm of men from the love of the glory of this world we detach ourselves from those things and we attach we bind ourselves to your purpose and your will for us we bind ourselves to this hallelujah oh god oh god this is my reason for living. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.